Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of handmade lure making. Now for part two. But stick around to the end because we've got a big announcement. There's going to be a huge giveaway. So let's head to the man shed with the man himself, the master of handmade lure making, Darren Dizzy Borg. So we've uh, come to the stage now where we've uh, had the epoxy on the lure. It's been on there for eight plus hours and it's come up nice and dry now. So we can take it off. We can take the pin out of the front, which uh, if you have a look there, I easily just use the uh, bib slot to slide it in. That's how I allows myself to get the epoxy on. So that now is ready to be sanded, like this one here. I've already pre-done, make life easy to show you. So this one's all sanded up, that's how it comes off. This is how it finishes when I've sanded it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that out to the bench saw and we're gonna put the slit down the middle. We're gonna cut that out, ready to show you how to put a through wire in. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna put this uh, middle cut in the lure so we can put our through wire through the lure so we've got a, a one piece of wire that runs right through it. Now, because I do so many lures in one hit, I use a band saw and I have it rigged up so that I can put the lure here and slide it through and it's going to cut the, the right depth that I need and it's, a, it's quite a fast and accurate way for me to do it. If you're just doing one or two lures at home, you can easily put that in a vise, close it up, and you can get a hand saw very carefully to put the cut in down as deep as you need it to go to get you through wire in. Right, so I'm gonna show you one of the easy ways to put a dynamite coating over your lure. So we've got the lure here, we've cut the slot, we're ready to go. Instead of painting it, we're gonna put a wrap on it. I get my wraps custom made but you can jump online. There's quite a few places around the world that do them. I think probably you'll find that some of the best wraps come from America. So that'd be the place that I'd start looking first. They're ideal. This is a mullet shape. So you've got mullet, you've got pilchards, you've got slimy mackerel, you've got multiple different types of uh, wraps that you can buy these days. Mullet's probably one of the best because I tell you what, everyone wants to use a mullet when they're out fishing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this inside the wrap, push it up to the front there, we center everything. And the big trick here is I like to look down from the front and make sure that the eyes on either side are centered. This is the hardest part with putting a wrap on. A lot of the time when you wrap your lures, you'll find that one eye will be a little bit higher or a little bit lower than the other. Um, you'll, over time you will get good at it. It took me a while to get it right. So. This is how easy it is. I've got the wrap on it, and we put it into nice hot water. We just had boiling and we just turned back. It shrinks over the lure. I dip it in to make sure everything's done. I pull it back out, get the hot water off it, and I check to make sure the lure has got nothing on it to worry about. There we go. A real lifelike lure that actually, when it's in the water, fair income looks like a mullet. I've put the wrap on and at the front you'll see there's a little bit at the front you've got to take off and a little bit at the back that needs to be taken off. So I'm going to clean those two areas up right now. I just make sure I get a really nice sharp knife and it's pretty simple. As long as that's sharp you won't have any issues. If it's not sharp you'll have issues. So there you go. You see how flush you can get it? And then we do the same to the back. As I said, it's, it's very important that the knife's sharp. I've made the mistake before of not using a sharp knife. And usually what happens, you cut yourself. So trust me, sharp knives don't cut your blunt knives do. We now have the lure at this stage. We wish to get the lure to this stage where we have our two hook hangers and our toe point and our bib. But to get to that stage, there's multiple ways you can do it. And I'm just going to quickly explain some of those ways to you. Now, the fastest way on small lures would be to drill a hole into the lure, use 24-hour araldite, and glue an eye in that screws in, stainless steel. Now, that's fine for smaller lures that aren't under a lot of pressure, but some of these larger lures that are under a lot of pressure, uh, we tend to 
bypass this method and go to a method where we'll use a piece of wire and we'll bend it up and we'll put it inside the lure. So what a lot of people do over the years, they'll bend their, their wire so that their wire comes from the back, will bends up to here, comes up and back out and back along and makes a toe point. So you've got a toe point in the front, hook point and a hook point. And they'll put that whole piece of wire in. Over many years of making quite large lures, I've uh, learnt that that method of putting a through wire through sometimes is not really reliable. It, it's, uh, it's got a bit of a weak point because the two front points when they're pulling against each other actually have a point in the middle that can start to open up. Even though you've, you've glued it in, things will still move under pressure when you're chasing big fish. So what I do to eliminate that problem and what I found to be a much stronger way of doing it is I actually have a wire that's one piece and will go all the way through the lure. Now what I do is I drill a hole here and I'll insert this little wire that I make up inside and I turn it to the side. So what happens is it sits in there and this piece of wire will run through, it'll run through inside here and it allows me to get all the wires in place. Then what I can do is I can lift this up, pull it to the side and I can fill that whole cavity with 24 hour araldite, place this back in nice and firm. And what happens is when you've got a big fish on, especially something that's big and it's shaking its head or it's jumping out of the water, the pressure on that front toe point and the pressure on that back point don't have any room to move. So we find it's a much stronger connection. I mean, th there are a lot of ways you can connect these lures. People have their own little tricks and, of, and whatnot of doing things. But over the years, this is just one way that I've found has been very reliable for me to make it through wire that doesn't break. And I can tell you, I've caught fish and some big fish on some of these types of lures. I mean, one of the, my memorable catches was a 36 kilo Jew many years ago. And I tell you what, he put the lure that I was using through the ringer. And at the end, the lure was still in one piece and nothing wrong with it. So it just goes to show you build them strong and you catch those big fish. So for me to bend this wire and to bend it pretty much the same way every time, I've got to make myself up a little jig. So this is what I made up. I make these all the time when I'm doing a lot of custom stuff so I can you know, do a certain pattern of, of uh, wire bend. The big secret to doing these and doing these successfully is having it so that all of these pins come out of all of the holes. Because if they don't, and you start bending the wire, you're gonna get yourself in such a tangle and end up having a, a wire that's a complete mess and, and useless. So whatever you do, when you make one of these, drill the hole and make it so that all of your pegs will slide in and out and allow you to move around, especially if you're doing a wire that is going to be with a V in the middle for your bottom hook hanger and to the end. You need to be able to remove and uh, put new ones of those pegs in at any time while you're bending this wire to make life easy. Okay, so I'm gonna start bending the wire that uh, runs right through the center. So this wire with the loop on the end, that's the one we're gonna bend now. So what I've done with my jig, I've got it here. I've got a little mark up here that my wire needs to go to, so I know it's long enough. That's the end of the lure. That's how much tag end I've got left over to be able to um, loop around at the end and tie off. At the front, this is where the loop's gonna be and this is the extra tag end I need to make out to make that loop. So now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take, pinch that there, I'm gonna roll over, I'm gonna get a pair of pliers, and we'll cut that piece off. Now we're starting to get somewhere. So this is where these things come in handy because I can move them around and put them in any hole I want, as you can see. So what we do, we go back to make sure we know we've got the right spot, that's where we wanna be. Okay, so first thing I do is I put a little bend the opposite way. So you can see I've put a little bend in one direction here now. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to roll it over. And I'm going to come back nice and tightly against So that's where the advantage is that. Now, 
that allows me to, to take that out and you can see that I've, I've basically got the shape that I need and all I need to do now is just give it a squeeze bring it down all one straight not messy now all I've got to do is tie this end up or weld this end whichever you prefer to do to make sure that it's secure and it's ready to go into the lure so I'm going to show you now a uh, little trick I learnt many many years ago um, when you bend these wires over uh, when you're doing them at home you need to be able to make sure that this piece here is secure uh, and quite strong and it's not going to give so I was shown by my grandfather a long time ago that uh, when doing these you can use uh, a little bit of fishing line or a little bit of cotton or a little bit of uh, wire rope uh, not wire rope but you know um, like seven strand wire or trace wire or something and you can wrap it around this insert that goes through the lure to make sure that the end connection is quite strong now how many wraps you do is up to you uh, when I'm making prototype lures this is the way I do them because I just find that it's uh, so much easier and faster because a lot of the time you make the prototype lure it doesn't do what you want to do and you go back to the drawing board and start all over again so you don't want to be mucking around spending time welding up these connections so you just want to do a connection that's reasonably strong because if you don't you'll end up hooking a good fish on a prototype and losing it which I've done before so you learn your lesson after a while so it's as simple as wrap it you can use, as I said, fishing line, cotton, seven strand uh, wire trace. Everybody uses something di different. Bit of super glue. There we go. And you will find that for a homemade lure, that is quite a good strong connection. If you missed out on entering our lure giveaway in part one of the masterclass in lure making, have no fear because we're going to be running it for another two weeks. But it's not for three lures, it's for six. So there's going to be six winners. If you want to find out the results, it's going to be two weeks from now. We're going to have six names on our Facebook page. So that's Coast Fish TV on Facebook. And you could be one of those lucky winners. All you have to do is write HM Lures in the comments. And that's it. One of a kind, hand signed by the man himself, the master lure maker, Darren Dizzy Borg. So we've made the front toe point. It's all ready to go. We have to make this middle hook hanger which is this little one here that we make up and the reason we've got to make this up is because when we put that wire through the center this has to slide through it so we have to make it up and drill a hole to insert it in the bottom so this middle wire will go all the way through to the end okay we're about to turn that into that and we're going to show you how to do it right now so we've made our jig you've seen us before we use this end of a jig which was for the other wire that we made up. Now we've got two holes here where we're gonna make this wire. Now what we're doing is we're putting it in, we're pulling it across to this end of here a little bit, and we're gonna pull this wire around nice and tightly until it firms up. Give it a squeeze. Then we're gonna turn it around and we're going to grab the wire from the other direction and drag it around here like so so that's the start of what it's going to look like so from this point onwards now what we have to do is we just have to close everything up so i just grab the pliers and we just close it up a little bit so we get not too much wasted area like that we come around this side and close this one up a little bit now, the hard part here is making sure that when you cut this wire, I like to cut it really close. And then I like to grab it on the end of my pliers and give it a little bend outwards. Now the outward bend is what helps stop this from pulling through once this wire is wrapped around the middle. So now again, we bring everything closer together hold it with our pliers we bring it down 
So you can see that the wire has gone over the top of this wire where the bend is. And then we wrap it around as tight as we can go. Wrapped around nice and tight, as you can see. We're going to cut it off. Push the tag end down. And then all we want to do is we just turn it sideways. So you can see that we've got one going that way and one going this way. So when we insert it into our lure, we'll insert it like that, so that the wire can run through the center, but our hook hanger is in line with the belly. Rightio, yeah, so I'm gonna put the hole where this middle toe point goes. As you can see, I put a little mark on the lure here. So I'm gonna drill that hole out now. And yes, it's a hand drill. Um, you can use a drill press, which is what I normally use, but for the purpose of showing you how to do this, I use a, a hand drill. Now, one other thing I wanna show you that you can't probably see too well, is I've put a little black mark on there, on the drill bit. So I know that if I drill down to that black mark, this hole will be long enough for me to put the insert in, but won't, come through the top of the lure and destroy all your hard work. So, let's see if we can get this right without mucking it up. You got the hole there cut through the middle where this is gonna slide through. So then we'll be inserting that into the lure and you'll see that when it's in the lure, you'll be able to glue it and straighten it all up and you'll have that middle toe point. And you'll also have your through wire but by right should go through the whole thing. And if I've done it right, you can't pull that out because the wire's gone through the hole at the other end. So, just in case you don't believe me that it works. <laughs> uh, very simple way of doing it. Very strong way of doing it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed part two of Masterclass in Lure Making. We've got part three to go. So, like, comment, subscribe so you guys don't miss out. And before you know it, you guys are going to be making some pretty awesome handmade lures. Until then, we'll see you in a couple of weeks from now on Coastfish TV. Yeah!